I was going to do all the testing with this, but no, that can wait until after I find out where my other 200-odd other darts are. Whenever I find out where they are, I'll probably finish, the, uh, I'll do the review portion of this video, which was going to be epic. Today, we're supposed to review this, or not review, overview this, and we will. But first, again, I have to do this review a second time, because apparently I covered the mic. And to get that covered doubly, because I have a tablet over there recording video, which I can rip the audio out of. Hopefully it's good and usable. It's, it is right there, so it should be good. Darts on Pro actual review, not just unboxing this time. And, aha! Just got exactly a week later, the box with the 120 standard length pro darts and 120 half length pro darts. Do not aim at either face and yada yada. yada. Alright. So, the full length darts come in a thing like this. The half length darts come in a box half this size and are now in this tub because I already thought this review was filmed and over with. Darts! Testing! I did steal the chronograph testing footage from the previous recording of this video. So you get to see that and fast forward with big close-ups of the screen. So that should be useful and happy. As you can clearly see, the curve mags work in this pretty much just fine, although I should probably remember to rip that footage of me showing that the, the bolt slid kind of hangs up on the nub of a Nerf magazine. That's right here. It It's occasional and you can kind of just yank it past it and it won't hurt anything because it just pushes the mag to the side. It doesn't, it's not a big deal. No. Now, I'm going to do this all out of order from how I did the last version of filming this video. I'm going to start with my number one issue with the Dart Zone Pro. Deep Prime and Lock. I assume that works basically exactly how the priming, or the, the slam fire bar in like an Alpha Trooper works. I'm going to assume that's how it works. It just doesn't um, come for. It doesn't have that nub on the end that engages between the trigger and the catch. It's just the bar. Uh, hopefully that's not the case because that would be very difficult to disable. So, anyways, moving on to the first point on here is of course the important part from the last video, which is darts. Um, their darts. Their dart heads are. Small-ish. Definitely 40% smaller dart heads than on the rest of the things. They seem otherwise, they're, they're Adventure Force. They're not, no, technically they're Adventure Force quality full because most of Adventure Force is produced by Dart Zone Pro, or by Dart Zone, but not for Pro. Uh, obviously, Dart Zone Pro and Adventure Force are two totally separate things that Dart Zone is doing. They're definitely glossier than your average dart where the where the taper is. So I wonder if they didn't use a heat shrinking process. I'm gonna imagine maybe some kind of a little hand comes down and you know, it, it's a it's a collet that a two piece thing that squeezes onto there and presses that down and applies some amount of heat to do that. To set them aside for yeah. uh, in my firing demo that will be de-rolled in Somewhere in this video, we're going to look at these darts that I made.
my design, which is to say it's a dart net attached to the mold. The dart net material is what's unique to my darts. And then eventually more swaffle darts, which uh, don't feed consistently in this. Sometimes they will get stuck. And what normally works for me is if they don't come out right away, do that. And basically, it's created an airlock inside of the barrel. All the pressure is still there. It hasn't gone anywhere because the seal is amazing. So when you do this, it's like pushing the blast button on an air blaster uh, that has a blast button It's not a pin. And basically, it, it causes that little whoosh for air from the outside to push, and it just suddenly breaks that seal, and the dart will take back off again. Minus 20 or more at yes. Oh, sweet guy. It's got a safety. I should use the safety. I, apparently, dry firing it, though, doesn't sound like death with this blaster, which is weird, because firing it normally kind of sounds like death sometimes. Um, so, uh, definitely, with this blaster, X-Shot darts, totally incompatible. Um, elite darts feed pretty good most of the time. Old-school Adventure Force darts, the the non-waffle ones, but the ones before that, the dome-headed ones, feed mostly reliably in this. If they're used, they're not going to feed so well, uh, because the pusher will, will fold the dart over and it'll get stuck in the breech. Uh, next point I want to talk about, oh, it's not too stuck to come back out. That took way too much effort. Next time I'll use this handy tool, which is in the box can be useful for some things. Um, it's not useful for what they advertise it for, which is clearing jams. Um, a ramrod from the front is much better than that, better for that. And of course, when you ramrod darts into anywhere out that are jammed in a blaster, make sure they fall out the breech after you've cleared the jam. Otherwise, they're going to be in the moving parts, and it's going to cause all kinds of problems. That aside, the aluminum barrel you can see it has this little silver spot right there. And that is from this screw right inside of here, the back of the opening for the priming handle. And uh, that's what retains this aluminum barrel. To change the barrels, you take out two screws on this side, two screws on this side, and pull the front muzzle out, and then barrel separately. Um, but the issue with this is, is that there's enough friction inside of the screw post that you don't know when you uh, tighten it down onto the plastic barrel and you'll continue to tighten it until the screw goes through it. Luckily I didn't do that but I did come close to doing that. And I backed it off and there is a slight lump inside of that opening of the barrel. Um, so definitely if you take or if or when you take the aluminum barrel out and put the plastic one in, just don't tighten it up that way or just be very, very careful about it. Uh, performance, I believe, is greater with the aluminum barrel, but I haven't noticed much difference between the two, other than more reliable feeding with the plastic barrels. Definitely the change is, to the plastic barrel, I think is worth it, especially if you're actually going to be playing against people. Um, maybe if you're going to do, be doing a, like a, a sniper contest or a full-out FPS contest, maybe go with the aluminum It is anodized, and there's a slight texture to the anodizing, which is, it's a very slight amount of texture, but it is noticeable. Um, it also is on the inside of the barrel, which may actually cause some drag issues, I'm not sure. Now, the thing with the barrel being removed from the front that I find odd is basically the whole teardown feature of the blaster it only gives you the storage option and the, the ease of transport option. It's otherwise kind of useless. Um, maybe if you don't have a ramrod, you can tear it down and, and push your finger back through the breech, through the uh, yeah, through the front of the breech, um, because that is separate from the front barrel. Is that the breech? The whole breech is here, and just the extended amount of barrel goes in front of that here, and it connects into that. So, here I can just show you quick. 
Also, I have no issue with the teardown pins themselves. Um, definitely, I think they're a benefit because without them, you basically have no sling mount for this thing other than back here, which is an enormous sling mount or a really small sling mount. Like I said, the, the entire breech is actually right here. And the barrel here, this kind of just connects into it. It is nice that they include these little uh, rubber dampeners on the uh, thumb screws. Um, yeah, definitely. Oh, that's right, because of the, uh, thing. I was going to say, you know, the teardown pins might be useless because the priming bar, but the priming mechanism keeps it on, but, uh, no it doesn't. That's not how physics works. Lightly injured myself. Uh, the texture, the texture drip and the textured bump pad are definitely nice. Um, a couple of people made the note about the stock being able to collapse if you prime it against yourself. Um, I didn't have that issue, but I went ahead and solved it with a piece of, with a stock block. The issue I have with the stock isn't that it can collapse too easily, but that it can extend too easily. Right here I've got it in a position where it's comfortable. But there's the locking mechanism, it only locks one way. It only locks pushing against the, pet, the stock, but not pushing it back out. Which means it's really easy for me to accidentally make this blaster too long to be comfortable. Which is the real reason I have the stock block in there, is because you're adjusting it back and forth and back and forth, and in a game, that situation arises. You don't want that. So the stock block makes it really easy for me to return it back to my comfortable setting. Which is, um, I guess, it's a double feature if you do decide to put a stock block in. Um, it slides out too easily. Um, as far as magazine compa compatibility, um, Nerf mags work with this perfectly. Um, its magazines, on the other hand, the short dart uh, magazine has this ridge here that is not present on a Nerf magazine and will stop it from going into a Nerf blaster. The full length Dart Zone, or Dart Zone Pro magazine has this ridge, but also right behind the, uh, the stop has these little uh, points here. I don't know what you'd call those ridges or whatever that aren't present on, present on a Nerf magazine and uh, prevent it doubly from going into a Nerf blaster. So you would have to make modifications to your Dart Zone magazines to make them cross-compatible with your Endstrike and Endstrike blasters. And possibly aftermarket stuff like the uh, Worker, uh, Swordfish and Dominator and Prophecy and Terminator. Probably also uh, the Dart Zone magazines won't work in those either. Worker mags are fully cross compatible with the Dart Zone Pro. Um, everything feeds well. I even say it feeds better with this because the uh, because the actual talon is further forward in the adapter. And uh, as we know, the dart zone uh, short dart mags are not compatible with the worker stuff. It's, in fact, the geometry is just wrong. So, not compatible that way at all. And this way, also not compatible at all. Which I don't get yet because they're both too big for the other one. What? Ah, see the uh, the lips on the Dart Zone one are too big to fit into the worker system setup, and the oh, and the overall talon is too big to fit into the Dart Zone Pro adapter. This 
course, we understand uh, the Jet Blast Katanas do have some perhaps capabilities, I believe. The handy tool is meant for the ability to clear jams, and I can't see any situation where that would be useful. Because the last thing you want to do is to shove more stuff into there. And this has no ability to pull a dirt back out, so I don't get it at all. But it might help you uh, slip sh some shoes on or something of that nature. Again, supposedly I'm going to get a video up about this today. Probably this afternoon I'll film that. I probably won't film it till the Dark Zone Pro review video is done with the rendering. part of this video, which is the price point. This is, of course, a $180 blaster, um, which includes an additional 120 darts, uh, which are different, separate somehow from the total package. So apparently, uh, the, the guessing is, is that when the blaster becomes available outside of the Mark I Collector's Edition, that uh, it'll probably only come with 30 darts, 15 short darts and 15 full length darts. And of course all of the blaster and the barrels and the magazines and the handy tool. Uh, the sights on this surf quick one, uh, back to where we were. So other blasters I can think of off, offhand that are similar to this is a uh, whatever nerf rival full auto motorized thing comes with a rechargeable battery and a bunch of darts, or a bunch of balls I should say. Well that's what, like $200 or $150, something like that, unless they're on sale. And the only downside to that is it's balls and it's a different play style from what this is. This is very different. Um, the Gremlin coming out of Germany, which is a 3D printed blaster. Um, I believe that's a 3S setup, but I'm not sure. That's $95 to get to the United States, probably cheaper in Europe. Um, and that is of course a pretty good blaster uh, for its price. It does not come with magazines. I believe it's only compatible with uh, with katanas, not talons. And talons are of course objectively better because of certain reasons, uh, like avail availability, construction quality, uh, a variety and all that. Of course it's possible that blaster will later come out cross -compatible. But that's not the point, because it doesn't include the magazines anyways, or any darts. This comes with a bunch of darts, comes with the magazines, and there's everything you need to play with it. No batteries required, no additional magazines required, although additional magazines are, of course, nice. And this is cross-compatible with everything that for uh, Nerf. But it is not cross-compatible. It, its mags don't work in Nerf, but whatever. You probably already have a couple of Nerf mags if you're watching this video and you care. Other blaster in that space I can think of is the Out of Darts Jupiter. Uh, if you buy the kit, it's 100 bucks, and then you put the blaster together and you need rival mags and you need rival balls and a battery, a lipo, 2S lipo, because it only is available with Fang revamps, which is ridiculous because Out of Darts himself sells motors that are Out of Darts brand, which are 3S. But whatever, it's 2S blaster. You need to get yourself a 2S lipo and Rival magazines are a proton pack, which is ridiculous. It's more money than you need bulbs. And so that adds up. And you can probably get a decent rival Jupiter or a Gremlin for about 180 bucks. And you have to assemble everything and paper stuff separately. Not as much of a complete package as this is. This is a great value for its price point. So comparably for price to uh, total value, this is comparable to a Nerf rival primary. Uh, but of course they belong in two different playstyle spaces. This is more of a run and gun thing, whereas that's more of a spray and pray. So, you know, it depends on your game style, what you want. It's definitely, you're getting what you, you pay for with this. They're not in, well, the one is in the firing footage, uh, one shot at 193 FPS with 
my homemade darts. One of them. I'm pretty sure that's the one that broke the head off when it hit the door. And then I had one the other day which hit a astonishing 205 FPS. Again, with one of my darts. The plastic barrel and the uh, darts on pro darts, we were only getting an FPS of about 127 average with a low of like 124, which isn't bad. And that actually puts you within the end war uh, cap because the only the high for that firing test was 129.1 FPS or something like that. So definitely with the plastic barrel and uh, the Dart Zone Pro darts, you could be well within end war uh, spec. And definitely would be better to be running with full lengths for end war um, because they're more compatible. That way you're not switching between half-length and full-length darts and magazines and having extra stuff to worry about. Just run full-length at the war, and you'd probably be uh, even better off. I haven't tested uh, performance with the Darts on Pro full-length darts, but everyone else has, so why should I bother? And I'm already, no, it's slightly less performance taking those 120s down one not 10s with the full-length darts. And of course, Adventure Force Waffle Dart's not going to work with the aluminum barrel. X-Shot Dart's not going to work with any barrel reliably. Uh, basically every half of your darts are going to jam if they're X-Shot Dart's in this blaster. Uh, other darts I wouldn't recommend are uh, any of the Busby uh, long range or long distance darts. Uh, whether that's the suction cup or the, the, the more dome tip style or the nipple tip haha uh -huh, style. Um, they're, they're not reliable in this because of the edges and how much exposed rubber there is on their head. Very funny. Um, they just get stuck. Although they are better with the plastic barrel, they're not reliable. And especially used darts tend to get crushed by the pusher in this. So you gotta watch out for that. So definitely I would recommend carrying a ramrod that's at least that long when you're taking this to a war so you can really quickly clear out jams and get back to the battle. So that should be everything for this video. Hopefully it's shorter than the first time I filmed this, which was like 40 minutes long. I'm sure it is, and I can cut some of this down. And hopefully the audio works this time. So remember to do everything I tell you to do in the end card. And we'll see you in the next video.